Good morning and welcome to worship service this morning. We had a good lesson in Sunday school, but I always start out with this and I love this is today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I, I love that verse because that should be our theme every morning when we get up because I'm here to tell you that we wouldn't be getting up like we do every morning if it wasn't for the Lord. He looks out for each and every one of us. And that's why we're here today. We're here just to uh, rejoice. And we'll have some good music in just a few moments, and we'll have a good message to follow the music. So it's just going to be an awesome day in the Lord. But I want to open up in prayer before I do the announcements. Dear God, our most precious Heavenly Father, as we come to you, Lord, at this time, Lord, we just thank you for this amazing, beautiful day that you've given us, Lord, just to serve you, Lord, just to worship in your name, Lord. We just thank you and praise you for all those that are in attendance here this morning, Lord, and those that are uh, watching on live stream, Lord. We just ask special blessing on each and every one here, God. Just touch them and uplift them, God, direct and lead their hearts, Lord. And just continue to help us as a church to uh, move in the right direction, Lord, that we'll, as the Sunday school lesson said this morning, that we'll be uh, unified in, in one body, Lord, and that is you, Lord. We'll be the body, and you are our head, Lord, and we just love and praise you for that, Lord. We thank you for all that you continue to do for us, Lord. A special blessing upon Pastor Bob as he brings the message this morning on uh, Alan as he leads the singing and uh, us as we uh, just open our hearts, Lord, that we'll uh, hear the message and the word and song, Lord. It's in your most precious name I pray. Amen. Uh, as we go into the announcements, of course, Sunday evening service at 6 p.m., and we'll be having the uh, birthday bash uh, immediately following. And I know Brother Larry, wherever he is, he's bringing chili. So I know we're having chili. So oh, be ready to eat some good uh, chili. He makes good chili. Uh, May 5th is going to be uh, baby day, and Sonny has the applications for anybody that uh, has somebody that they're going to be bringing. So see Sonny, and she'll give you the uh, paper to uh, fill out. Then uh, tomorrow evening is the women's uh, ministry meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday night is the board meeting at 6 p.m. Wednesday, regular uh, midweek Bible study. And then looking ahead is uh, J.D. and Rebecca Ray will be here in concert on uh, Sunday morning, uh, the 14th. We'll have the... Uh, Cytles, uh, uh on Sunday night, the 20, uh, April 28th, and along with the Gideon speaker on uh, that morning. Uh, also, May 1st, Faith Promise uh, pledges are due at that time. And last but not least, in May 4th, the ladies will be going on a mission trip to Amish country. And I'm not sure if I heard this right, but I think men are invited too. But don't quote me on that. I don't want to get myself in trouble. So everyone is invited. Uh, so that is our uh, announcements and everything that is coming up. So let's be in prayer for each and every one of those that will be happening. And finally, and not last but not least, we have these bumper stickers that Pastor Bob has. And they're up here. And if you would like one, just see Pastor Bob. Or if, you, if not, they're laying right here on the front bench. But they just kind of let say, Blenner has the Church of the Nazarene. And they'll know that we are a church of God, that we uh, promote what the Bible says. We are a Bible-preaching church. Amen. Now I'm going to turn it over to Brother Allen. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning. Let's all stand. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. Uh, if I can find the words to it, we're going to sing uh, Jesus and Me, and I want you all to get out of your seats, get around, and in case there was somebody you did not shake hands with, make sure you shake hands with them. Because uh, 
I think it's important for us to let everyone know that they're, we feel that they're welcome and we love them. So if you haven't shaken hands with somebody this morning, go ahead and do it as we sing Jesus and Me. I traveled alone upon this lonesome way. My burden was heavy and dark was my day. I looked for a friend not knowing that he had all of the time been looking for me. Now it is Jesus and me for each tomorrow, for every heartache and every sorrow. I know that I can depend upon my newfound friend. And so to the end, it's Jesus and me. Now it is Jesus and me for each tomorrow. For every heartache and every sorrow, I know that I can depend upon my newfound friend. And so till the end, it's Jesus and me. Now, I'm going to mess up PK and Angie a little bit, but uh, you may be seated, and, and please turn in your hymnals to page 409, 409, the haven of rest. God bless you, sir. My soul in sad I was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered the haven of rest. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wild sea no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. In Jesus I am safe evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word. My fetters fell off and I anchored my soul. The haven of rest is my Lord. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep. In Jesus 
I am safe evermore. And the last verse. Oh, come to the Savior. He patiently waits to save by His power divine. Come anchor your soul in the haven of rest and say, my beloved is mine. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in Jesus I am safe evermore all right um, which one of you are going to do the uh, prayer request and the prayer you or Cecil Bob okay come on up and do the prayer request Bob Uh, in, in regards to the prayer request, we we want to continue to remember Colleen in prayer as she's waiting for more tests, and and also uh, Whitney Alexander haven't had Mike any any other reports on her. Okay, that's okay. And then Ray and Jean Ray will be having uh, tests this week. Tommy Burris. Want to continue to remember him in prayer, Reverend Jesse Keenan. I haven't got a report about. Uh, uh, anyone know anything about him this morning? He just wasn't feeling good, so he just decided not to come. He wasn't feeling good. Okay, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Uh, not that he's not feeling good, but glad to know why he's not here. Uh, Gary um, Long has had five radium treatments already. He'll have them every five days a week for the next five weeks. Remember him. And Angie, we want to continue to remember her. Want to remember the Valley, Valerie Swisher family, uh, that, that, uh, that her sister had uh, uh, went through high water out of Davidsville. The car flipped over and she drowned. And she has a little boy. We want to remember that family. Carolyn Small. Uh, Carolyn is going to be having surgery here in the near future. And uh, Anthony, we want to remember him. And, and Roger Bradley, Ernie Fall, uh, Patty Little, and Cassie Lucas. Continue to remember them in prayer as well. Continue to remember Carol Pickens as well in prayer. Anyone else have a prayer request here this morning that you want to share? Don't forget Trevor. Trevor. And, uh, yeah. We want to continue to remember them. And, and Nikki Limley. Uh, unspoken request by a raise of hands. And continue to, continue to remember Becky Wells as the, the, the Lord continues to help her as well. Let's stand. Let's sing our prayer chorus. And after we sing our prayer chorus, uh, I'm going to have Pastor Cecil to come on up and lead us in our pastoral prayer time. Amen. It's very important. So if you want to come and pray, the altar is open. Of the living God fall fresh on me, Spirit of the living God fall fresh on me, melt me. Of the 
living God fall fresh on me. Dear God, our most precious, kind Heavenly Father, as we come to you at this sacred time, Lord, we just humbly uh, bow our heads, Lord, in your presence, Lord, just asking that you uh, be in the presence of our uh, congregation this morning. We just ask special blessing upon those that are in attendance, Lord, those that could not be in attendance, Lord. We just ask special blessing upon them, Lord. At this time, Lord, we just want to anoint and uplift all those that were listed on the prayer concern list, Lord. You know the needs of each and every one, Lord. And I know that if I tried to name all of them, I might forget somebody, Lord. But the best thing is, Lord, you know every prayer request that has been made. You know everyone that is listed on our prayer concern list, Lord. And we just ask uh, anointing of each and every one of them, Lord, that you will grant and hear their prayers, Lord. And you will hear grant and hear our prayers, Lord, that... Whatever the need is, Lord, you will take care of that need in your time and in your way and in your will, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you'll put a hedge of protection around each and every one of them, Lord, as uh, they go throughout the treatments and the various things that are going on in their lives, Lord. Just be with them. Be with their family members that are helping to take care of them. Watch over them, Lord, as they need special prayer too, Lord, because it's sometimes it is hard just to... Uh, do the things that we need to do on a daily basis with our loved ones who need us at this time, Lord. We just ask special blessing upon all those, Lord, at this time that throughout our world, our nation, Lord, the countries that uh, do not know you, Lord, that they will come. There's coming a time soon, Lord, that we're all going to need to answer, Lord. And the answer needs to be, you are my Lord. And you are risen, Lord, and we praise you for that, and we thank you for that, Lord. And it's in your most dear heavenly name I pray. Amen. And give us the message for today. There's a land that is fairer than day <clears throat> And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious song of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love 
and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. That was a good job, Mike. And I uh, appreciate that song. It's good. We're missing quite a few here this morning when they continue to pray for each and every one. Even those out there that's viewing online, uh, we're glad you're with us this morning. And if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of First Peter? Um, some time ago, I preached on these verses, but God laid upon those verses again today in a different message. And and uh, if you will, the the book of First Peter, chapter one, and uh, verses six and seven. It's a, a very important message that, that I want to share with you this morning. I'm glad for everyone that is here and that uh, we'll be much in prayer for you as you uh, face the, the many things that's going on this coming week. Again, First Peter chapter 1, in reverence to those that can, would you stand for the reading of the scriptures, First uh, Peter one chapter, chapter one, verses six and seven. Praise the Lord. the The word of God says this: Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations that simply the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, that it might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Honey, would you pray for us? Grant it, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And by the way, don't forget, next Sunday morning, J.D. Uh, will be with us in, in music ministry. Uh, we've had him once. Uh, he does a remarkable job, him and his wife. I uh, love to hear them sing. And I hope and pray that you'll invite others to come with you as well. But I want to share with you this morning about a living, tried and true faith. It's important in the days that we live that we understand that many times our faith will be tried. We will be tested and we can prove that we can have that true faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. For faithful is he that calleth you who will also what? Do it. Amen. You see, we as Christians, we sometimes... And many times are finding ourselves and we're experiencing going through many trials. And many of our church family have already been going through such trials. And there seems like there's no reason or rhyme of why we're going through these difficulties. But God counts us worthy, Linda, that we might be able to go through them. Now trust with me, the trials of faith 
if you haven't experienced any, they certainly will come because they are to make you and I stronger in the Lord. I don't know about you, but I suspicion that you're like me, that you want to get closer to God, that, that you want to be a better servant of His, that you want to be able to experience the things that God can use in your life to bring Him glory, honor, and praise. And so we must not be shocked, we must not be surprised whenever these times of difficulty comes in our lives because God counts us worthy that we can be His vessels. Because there's truly no Christian is immune from them. I find that even Jesus wasn't immune. He suffered many things. He suffered from Satan as he was attacked. Uh, as you see that, that uh, he rebuked Satan in the name and in the word of God. I understand also Billy Graham, which was a great man of God. Billy Sunday. Uh, many of the saints of God that's went on for years and years and have suffered many, many battles, they too never escaped those battles, and yet they encountered, and they joyfully made it through the race. But don't you ever think, don't ever think that you're an abnormal Christian when the trials come. Don't ever think that you're being punished for something that you did because God counts us worthy. We are in training. Amen. I have a, I'm still looking forward to getting my WD degree. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter to the joys of the Lord. And many of us are going through many battles, and I trust that you will get your WD degree, and that you will come stronger through the fires. Many of you have been through many fires, and there's many that's going through the fires even now. But truly, you're not an abnormal Christians, because they will come, and they are used to make us better servants of the Most High. You see, just when we think we've got something figured out, isn't it amazing, Ken, that something else happens? What else can happen, you might say? It just surprises us when it really, really shouldn't. Because understand, when these times of trials and testings come in your life, Jesus counts you worthy of being His vessel his disciple, his child, to where he can shine through us. Lord, may all who come behind us find us faithful in serving the true and living God, in knowing that we are more than overcomer through Christ, which overcame the world. We can never anticipate where these trials and difficulties will come. Though we know that they will come, and we know that they've come for many of the people, even in our church today. As I could look back, I can see and understand that be not alone, be not in despair, because God is going to take you over the hilltop. Amen? He's going to give you victory, Ray, He's going to help you to be delivered from these battles. He's going to help Gary. He's helping Reverend Keenan. He gave it such a wonderful witness even last week. So you understand, trials, they, they, they don't make us comfortable. We are uncomfortable when they come because they bring us grief. And many times we are troubled. Many times we wonder, God... Are you still there? Are you still on the throne? Are you still in charge? Do you know what I'm going through? God, why are you allowing me to experience these kinds of difficulties? It's so you can shine for Jesus. You might say, 
but I can shine for Jesus without going through them. You know, it's through the fire that we are all refined. You see, trials many times will hit us very hard. I, I, I confess to you, I've had my battles. I'm still having some of my battle. I still, whenever it comes to Monday morning, when it goes, when I when I get up at one o'clock tomorrow morning, and I go out there and understand that I've got dialysis three times this week, it's sometimes very tough for me to want to get up and want to go to those treatments. But yet I go because I understand that listen, God never brought this on but he's allowing me to shine through this. There's many people there that I deal with, and, and, and trust me, it is a huge mission field to where there are those, and most of those, not all, but most of them need our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's faithful is he who calleth you who will also do it. So I am more than a conqueror through him. And you are more than conqueror through him that first called us. You see, we don't understand why things happen like they do. And, and I have to confess to you, maybe we will never ever understand why we are encountering these difficulties. And it's not important that we understand the reason why under, other than understanding he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me because in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. So he is going to come. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. But we need not to be feared, no matter what the difficulty, what the circumstances, because God still has everything under control. You see, trials will test us with real fire. And what do I know about real fire? I know real fire burns. I've been a, a part of several fires that uh, camp meeting campfires. I've been a part of the fire that's coming from a stove whenever my wife was cooking and I forgot about it and I touched my hand on that stove and I got burnt because of the hot fire that was coming from that. You see, trials get very hot sometimes. They get hard to experience, but we have to understand. We have to be positive. We can't have stinking thinking when we come through trial, thinking our God's abandoned us. He's forgot who we are. He's hard hearing. He's deaf. He's blind. He doesn't see. He sees everything that you and I are going through. I'm glad to know that we can count on Him, Mike, for whatever the situation is. I've ne I don't know about you, but I've never had a pleasant trial. Is there anyone here this morning that you could raise your hand and say, Pastor, I've been through some pleasant trials. <laughs> Because I don't know that there's such a... I think that sounds like an oxymoron. Because we have not had pleasant trials uh, when they come. God helps us to, to make it through them. He gives us the strength. He gives us the will. He gives us the desire that we might be able to shine for Him. He gives us the desire of knowing that we can count on His promises to knowing that, dear Father, I can count on you in the midst of it all. Well, some might, be, might ask a question, why do we have trials of our faith? I'm glad you asked, Mart. I'm going to tell you. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 that I read, wherein you greatly rejoice, and here's why we greatly rejoice, 
though now it's only for a season. You understand that these trials, when they come, they are only going to last for a season. They will come. They will go. They are temporary. Heaven is eternal. If need be, you may even be in heaviness through manifold temptations. There might be many temptations. There might be many trials. There might be many sufferings, but yet God counts you worthy. And you need to look at it with a positive attitude. Lord, I'm, I'm glad it's not my brother or my sister, but it's me, Lord, that stands in need of being able to prove who you are. Because it's understanding as we become good soldiers of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we become victors through the battles, through all the blazes, through all the difficulties, that we can let these trials build us up. Know this, these trials, full of trials, through a of temptations that you will face him and if you haven't experienced a trouble or a trial yet fear not as a Christian they are coming they will come whether you're a Christian or not thank God for those of us who are Christians we have someone to turn to amen I don't know how people make it Gene without the Lord they bring heaviness many times because there is severe testings. There are severe difficulties. Sometimes, you see, these trials are needed to keep us closer and to keep us on course to make heaven our home. I want to tell you that if it takes every difficulty in life for me to make it to heaven... I want to make it to heaven more than anything else in the world. I want to be counted worthy of my Lord, my Master, of being able to be His servant, to go through whatever difficulties that He would allow me to go through that would bring Him glory and bring Him honor. You see, just like trials are needed, I watched two basketball games yesterday. I watched the, the ladies. I watched uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes and this gal that, that's broken all the records. I watched them as they went ahead and played Connecticut girls. And wow, what a ball game it was. It was so thrilling. It was so exciting. I got so excited how fast those girls could run up and down the courts. And then I got excited last night because I watched the Connecticut game with uh, Alabama. And it's a shame that there had to be a loser. I saw those guys go up and down the floor so fast, lightning spit, and I thought, they're wearing me out just watching them. You see, understand, many of them had been through many trials too. And the fact of it is, uh, when we are going through trials, we need practice. I, ironically, I heard the boys, whenever they Connecticut won last night, they just said that they were wanting to go ahead and practice today. When I heard about the Iowa Hawkeyes and the girls that had a wonderful team, and boy, I'm not kidding you how phenomenal they were, that the team that won, which was Iowa, they just said, even though the ball game, um, the, they played Friday night, and uh, they wanted to practice yesterday, because practice makes perfect. You see, practice, it takes a lot of practice to be able to be prepared for the final event, and the same way it was. And sometimes... Even you, your kids will have to go through some rough situations. Many times they have to go through trials. Many times they have to go through preparations 
as they prepare in life. Folks, they are young. We need to support our young people all we can. We need to encourage them. They need to be able to see Christ in us so whenever they go through the difficulties in life that they can see, hey, Brother so-and-so, I can remember Brother Glenn Teeter back in the Elkins. I can remember a lot of, I can remember Sister Hazel Batten. I can remember Lester Batten. I can remember Vernon Kaplinger that lived down the street. I can remember many others. Roy McCoy, uh, how thrilling he was. I remember Laco and Ed McCoy. I, I, I just remember Peggy Johnson. I remember uh, Lloyd Johnson. I remember many of them that's went through a lot of battles and they've all made it to heaven. And thank the Lord they were counted worthy that they, were made, they made their preparations and they stayed true. You see, sometimes we have to practice to be able to learn. Sometimes it's important for us to practice what we teach and practice what we preach and practice what we live. That we live by faith because faith is what gives us victory in the sight of all the difficulties of life. You see, God does not do anything without having a positive intention or having a positive intent of working things out for us. He counts you and I worthy. I'm glad that He does count us as His children worthy. Amen? You see, God is not playing a game with us. This is eternal consequences. We can either prove to be true. We can either be proving to be faithful witnesses, or we can bring disgrace upon our Lord and Savior because God wants us to be enrolled as soldiers of the cross. Jesus suffered many things. Amen? And so must you and I. He is not, uh, he is not some mean God who wants to torment you. God never wants to torment you. He wants to teach. I'm glad for faithful teachers, aren't you? I'm glad that I can look back to Sister Brown. When, when, when we first started going to church, I got saved. I, I, I told Sonny when we went to class out, I said, if Sister Brown asked me one question that I can't answer and I'm embarrassed, I'll never ever dart the doors of the church again. Can I tell you, she never asked me a question. I learned from her. I've learned from many of the saints of God. I've learned through Roy McCoy. I've learned through all these. Uh, Vernon Kaplinger had very little, but yet he had so much of God. And he had so much of God that in the midst of his tough times, he shined for Jesus. Oh, how I can say about you. I am proud of many of you that's been through the storms, that you're going through the storms, and that you're trusting in God to help you through it. Having faith, Ray, in Lord Jesus, He's going to bring me out of the desert where it's dusty and dry. He's going to take you to the other side. He's going to make you more than victorious through Him who loved you. You see, He uses everything at His disposal to bring us closer to Him. Closer, Lord Jesus, is where I want to be. We may never know every reason for every trial that we go through, but can I assure you of one thing? God knows every purpose. He knows every desire. He knows every heartbeat. And He knows every throb. He knows every testing. He knows how you're trusting in Him because He sees your heart. He sees your soul. He sees your mind. And He understands if you are on His side. 
if you are supporting him. We must be, church, faithful witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ because there's a lost and dying world out there that's looking for others to be able to see, hey, I want to see Jesus. And the only way many people will see Jesus if they see Jesus in you. And if, and if Jesus is operating in the tough times that you are going through in your life. We should believe that the trials that we find ourselves in, they will have a definite purpose because they are within the will of God that He counts us so worthy. We find ourselves in the trial that we should, when we're in the midst of those trials, we need to remember God is working. Where are you at, God? I'm reminded like the guy that was falling over the cliff. All there was was a little branch of a tree and he held on. And he hollered, Is anyone up there? Is anyone up there? If anyone's up there, hear me. Talk to me. About that time, there was a voice come. Let go. Let go. It was a 500 foot drop. He looks up and he hollers again. Is anyone else up there? <laughs> Sometimes God is there. We'll call out to him. And if he doesn't give us the answer we want, is anyone else there? Does anyone else have the answer to my questions? We should look at a trial as God working to bring us closer. Lord, what can we learn through our trials? What can we learn through these difficult times? What can I learn through this cancer that I'm going through? What can I, th what can I learn through this leukemia? What can I learn through these heart problems? What can I lear learn through these times of sicknesses? What can I learn through these times of losses? What can I learn from these times of feeling abandoned, God? How are you? God, help me to learn. Help me to grow. Help me to be nurtured through your word. Huh. You see, there's a purpose in every trial. I know that Mike and, and Jesse are experiencing that with little Anthony. And yet they are coming through as shining garments because they love that little boy so much. Let me tell you what. It's important for you to know when you're going through the tough times of life how much God loves you because He counts you worthy of being His servant, of being able to shine the light, of being able to have an influence upon a lost and dying world. Charlie of having influence upon Carol. Linda of having influence upon your family. Don and Thelma, every one of you all. Uh, Ken and Merle, Mike, every one of you, that you can learn how you can be a witness through these times. God counts it a privilege. You see, there is... And there always will be a purpose in the trials that you are going through. The results, what are the results of a tested faith? I'm glad you asked, Barb. I'm going to tell you. First Peter 1.7 says this, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Gold! As valuable as gold is, it's more valuable, God says, than gold. Because it's much more precious. Though it be tried with fire, it, that it might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith is refined in the fire, in the fire, the burn, uh, the, 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 the dross is burned off. 
How is gold refined? I'm told that when it passes over and over through the fire, it burns out all the impurities to where everything's not 99 and 44%, but 100% pure. Every time it comes through the fire, it becomes a little bit more pure. Think about that, church. Every time you come through a fire, every time you come through a difficulty, every time you come through a real heart-weighted burden, that you are a little bit more refined to where you're becoming a little bit more and more and more, Thelma, like Jesus. Isn't that what our desires is? My desire is to emulate my Lord and Savior, that where people can see Christ in me, not just in the good times, but in the tough times, to where they too can know that they can make it no matter what they're going through in their life. Every time it comes out of the fire, it's a little bit more pure. What about you? Are you a little more pure every time you come through a fire? You see, trial, trials will truly refine our faith in Him. Faith in God will, will what is it? Build a, Build a mighty mountain. Faith will calm the troubled sea. Faith will make the desert like a fountain. Faith! And our Lord Jesus Christ will bring the victory. Trials truly will refine us. It will build your character. Well, Pastor, I'm not worried about my character being built. Well, you should be. Because your character is who you are. And who you are is how you're representing God. Every time we pass through the trials of our life, our faith will become more pure and more pure. And as we're being refined like gold, that the dross is being burned out to where everything that's left is going to be pure. You see, it's just like the general superintendent that called the pastor's wife up and he had a cup, a big tall glass of water, a, a, a glass, and it had only that much water in it. And he held the glass and he said, he said, now, pastor's wife, shake my horn. And she just barely shook it because he was the general superintendent. And he said, no, I mean, shake it really hard. And, and she just barely started. He said, shake it really hard. And no, there was that much in a glass that was like 16 to 20 ounces when she really shook his hand, ha, it splashed out all over, even though there was that much. He said, why did it splash out? And she says, no, it, it's, it's, it splashed out because I put pressure on you. And he said, no, it splashed out because water was in the glass. You see, what's in you is what's going to splash out. If you're filled with the love of God, if you're filled full of faith, if you're filled full of trust, that's going to spill out of your life in the times of trials and testings. It's going to be a natural thing because that's the way God operates. You see, we'll learn more about ourselves when we go through trials. Are you learning more about yourself since you've been through the last trial or difficulty? We learn some things about the storms that we encounter. And here's one of the things we learn. We're not as powerful as we thought we were. Hello? I thought I was tough. <laughs> I used to think I was a pretty tough guy. I used to think, Donna, I could handle and all, and now I'm finding out, Mike, I'm just a little old wimp. I'm just a little old run of a guy. 
I'm like my wife called me now Chief Four Toes. You see, I'm not as powerful as I once was. I'm learned. I'm not in control. I've learned that my God is real. He's real in my soul. My God is real for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real. My God is real for I can feel Him in my soul. I can feel Him empowering me. I can feel Him giving me victory. I can feel Him encouraging me. I can feel Him lifting me up. I can feel Him giving me victory in Jesus over every trial and temptation of life because He said He would do it. Faithful is He who calleth you who will also do it. You see, we learn that we have to seek someone higher than what we are. We learn about Jesus during our trials. We learn that there's really no one else to turn to if you really want to get victory in your trials. Don't turn to, don't turn to, try to turn to mom or dad. Yes, they can bring you comfort, but only Jesus can bring you the victory. Only Jesus can take you through the storms of life And he promised that he would. You see, we learn that the grace of God can bring us through. Oh, that grace song again, Donna. His grace is sufficient in the midst. I'm reminded even when Larry, when Larry was dying, Larry never gave up on his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm here to tell you, when many of your families have already went on to be with the Lord, you can count that their faith was never weakened. It got stronger. And the closer you get to eternity, can I tell you, that's the storm that God helps you. I've never seen a saint of God struggle in going home. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. We learn He is faithful. He is never going to forsake you. I want that indelibly inspired in your brain. I will, God will never fail you. Our tested faith will definitely make you stronger than you were before the trial. You can understand that in your, in your walk with God, every day with Jesus as we sing, is sweeter than the days before. Every day with Jesus, I love Him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. And He's the one I'm looking for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Why? Because He comforts. My grandmother's favorite song was, And He Walks With Me, And He Talks With Me, And he tells me I am his own. What a joy to share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Have you known? Have you known? That he walks with you. He talks with you. He loves you. He encourages you. He just says, hey, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, I will take care of you. We learn Jesus can bring us through the storms of life. That's why I love to always hear the McCamey sing that he's not only the God on the mountain, he is the God in the valley because it's through the. Can I tell you something? The valleys is where the fertile soil is. That's where the lilies grow. And it's where the fertile soil is. Is there fertile soil in your soul to allow you to dig in and to hold on and to grow and to be nourished in the times of your testings? Do we really 
Do we really depend upon God to bring us through? Or are we calling out to everyone else for the answers? Our tested faith. Listen, when our faith is tested, the Bible says in these verses, it will bring, us, it will bring Him praise. Is your testings bringing Him praise? Is your testings bringing Him honor? Is, is, is your testings bringing Him glory? Is His testings allowing you to have praise on your lips to tell everyone how precious Jesus is to you? I love the song is, He brought me out of the deep miry clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today. A song of praise. Hallelujah. And I wouldn't have that song of praise if it wasn't that not only did He save me, did He sanctify me, but He tells me He'll keep me in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Him. Is your mind stayed on Him through thick and through thin? You see, <laughs> wow, as we emerge through the storms, we need to understand it's Him, it's Jesus that brings us through. We may not fully understand God's purposes for the trials. Listen until the revelation or the coming of the judgment seat of God when He comes and calls us home. I don't know about you, but suddenly whenever we make it to heaven, those questions aren't going to be important anymore. Just to be at the feet of Jesus just to thank Him for saving my soul. Just to thank Him for making me whole. Just to thank Him for keeping me through the midst of all the storms and the trials. To help me through all the times of disappointments. To help me through all the times of hurt. And folks, let me tell you, in the last two weeks I've had a few things that really hurt me to the core when I heard about some things hurt me to the core. And what did I do? I took them to Jesus because I couldn't handle them. I gave them to Him. And guess what? He gave back to me. He gave back to me peace. He gave back to me joy. He gave back to me comfort. He gave back to me the sweetest, sweetest presence of God. I tell people when they say, how... How in the world do you in call, enjoy the call of preaching? I tell people this. Being honored to become a minister of the gospel is the sweetest misery I've ever had in my life. It's the sweetest misery because it's His calling. Folks, let me tell you, and I've, I've counseled many young people, if you don't know that God's called you to preach the gospel, don't do it! Because if you don't have that assurance that you're God called, you will never make it. If you don't have that assurance that God's promised that He'd never leave you and He'd never forsake you, that He would save you, He would sanctify you, he would empower you. If you don't have that assurance, it'll never work! Right. It's got to be felt. It's got to be tilt. You see, there are some things that happen that I can never, ever explain. There's things that happen that you can never, ever explain. There are some things that we go through that will not have an immediate explanation. God, isn't it amazing when we go through something? You know what my first question is? Why am I going through this, God? <laughs> am I the only one that's ever asked that question? I don't think so. 
we'll ask God, God, why, why are you allowing me to go through this? Lord, you know the hurt. You know how it, it, it has reached to the core of my spirit. It's weighing me clear down. I can't seem like I can make it. That is just more of a trial than I can stand. And yet, Christ says, hear my voice. If any man hear my voice, I will come to him. I will sup with him. And he will sup with me. But we can be sure God does definitely have a purpose for everything that we encounter in our life. And finally, let's look at the view of a tested faith. Here's a view. 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, you love. <laughs> I haven't seen Jesus. Haven't smelled Jesus. Haven't tasted Jesus. But I can feel Him in my soul. I can feel His presence here in this sanctuary this morning. I can feel His power as I'm preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. In whom you have not seen your love in whom, though now you see him not, yet you believe. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered, and time shall be no more, I still going to believe in the old rugged cross. If... Uh, going through this. Though now you see him not yet believe, and yet you rejoice. Are we rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory? Oh my soul, though it was exile, yet it's in full control of my Lord Jesus Christ. And it's to bring him joy it's to be joy unspeakable and, 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 and bring Him full glory. And the last part of that verse says here, here's the reward. Here is the promised reward. Receiving the end of your faith. What's the end of your faith? Even the salvation of your soul. Wow. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to die. No, never. Jesus died on the tree for me. I'm going to live forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. And these temporary setbacks, these temporary sufferings, these temporary testings, they're only for a season. But I'm going to live with Jesus forevermore. We love Jesus even though we don't see Him. You see, trials and temptations, they are to be conquered. We are more than conquered through Him who first loved us. By our love, we're more than conquerors by our love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Trials and temptations are conquered by our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that He'll help you? That He'll never leave you? That He'll never abandon you? That no matter what testings you go through, and even those of what, that's watching online, God is going to help you through those times of testings. You see, by our rejecting and turning away from all temptations, we must turn away. 
How do we do it? By standing firm upon his word. By relying upon his presence. By relying upon his power to conquer and carry us through the trials. You see, trials and temptations are to be conquered through rejoicing. Are you rejoicing today with joy unspeakable that it fills your heart? Trials and temptations are to be conquered by keeping our eyes and ears focused upon the salvation of souls. Amen. Lord, let me live for others that my life can shine if it doesn't work for the child of God. No one will want it. Does your faith work in the midst of a lost and dying world? In conclusion, let me say this. Trials and testings are not something that we enjoy or that we even understand. But what's the end result? Ken, I'm glad you asked. The end result is that we will have a stronger faith in the one who loves us, in the one who gave his life for us. Let me ask you, have you placed your all? Have you placed your faith? Have you placed your trust fully in Jesus today? Have you given him all of these burdens, all of these difficulties? Turn your eyes up on Jesus. There's a song that says, I'll live for him who died for me. Will you live for him? If you live for him, you will allow your light to shine for him. Would you stand with me? And those of you that want to, if you would want to follow Alan in song, it's page 327. And it simply says this, turn your eyes up on Jesus. Have you turned your eyes up on Jesus this morning? Is there anyone here, and, and without raising their hand or saying another word, you understand that you're going through some trials. You're going through some testings. You want to be proven. You want to prove true to be for the Lord. You want to let your light be a witness. You want the empowerment to be able to make it through the storm. Can I ask you, would you be willing to turn your eyes on Jesus? If there's anything that anyone is going through here this morning, the pastor, me nor Pastor Cecil, need to know. But would you like to just come up to an old-fashioned altar? And would you like to just come up and give that problem to him? Lord, huh, I thought I would gave it to you, but I'm not sure. I want to go on record today that God... I'm wanting to be refined in the fire. I want to be true. I want to let my light shine. I want people to see Jesus in me. And I want to be able to come through these difficulties bringing you glory, bringing you honor, bringing you praise. Anyone willing to step out even before Turn your eyes up on Jesus. Look full in His wonderful grace. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Anyone else want to come? I'm telling you what. Wow. Just to come. Turn your burdens. Turn your problems fully over to Him. Would you have faith to step out? And would you have faith to come? 
as Alan sings that song right now. The altar's open. Would you mind the Lord? Don't be afraid to step out. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the 